Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 252. If you're just creative, you always have to rely on technical people. If you're creative and technical, you're unstoppable. Robert Rodriguez. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's episode is brought to you by Blackbox. Blackbox is a new platform and community that is all about financial freedom for filmmakers like you. If you join Blackbox, you will be transformed from being a worker to being a maker of your own content, and you'll be making steady passive income from the global market. Blackbox currently allows you to upload your stock footage once, get it to many global agencies, and then allows you to share that passive income stream with your collaborators. Whether you want to submit old footage that's been sitting around in your hard drives or create brand new content, Blackbox is for you. It's really quite revolutionary. With Blackbox, filmmakers can concentrate on making great content while Blackbox takes care of all the business BS. Just visit www.blackbox.global to find out more. Today's show is also sponsored by Studio Unknown. Studio Unknown is a crack team of audio post professionals known for quality sound on any indie budget. Whether you need a lush surround sound mix or a quick festival submission pass, Studio Known can help you with all of your post-sound needs, from sound design and mix to Foley, ADR, and even a custom score. Contact Studio Known and mention the Indie Film Also podcast, and you'll get 50% off one day of ADR or 10% off your complete post-sound package. Just go to studiounknown.com. Now, today on the show, we have Alejandro Montoya Marin, who is a writer-director of the movie Monday. And he made the movie for $7,000, which we've had many other filmmakers on on the show that have done low-budget movies for five grand, and I've done really low-budget movies. But what makes Alejandro special is he was part of the Rebel Without a Crew TV series, which is based on Robert Rodriguez's book of the same name. And Alejandro went through the entire process of being mentored by the legendary Robert Rodriguez while he was making his movie as well as having cameras on him 24-7 almost while he made his movie in just 14 days and of a budget of $7,000. So, of course, I asked, like, is it really $7,000? It's a TV show. So, like, you know, do they give you a little this, give you that? He's like, no, they were pretty brutal. And they just gave him what they said they were going to give him. And there was no wiggle room at all. Now, if you guys have been listening to me over the course of the last three years, you know what a big influence uh, and what a fan I am of Robert Rodriguez. So I really had such a ball talking to him about doing something I always wanted to have done, being mentored by Robert Rodriguez during the production of your first feature film. It is insane. But Alejandro was very humble, really cool guy. We sat down and just talked shop, and uh, it was a ball. So please enjoy my conversation with Alejandro Montoya Marin. I'd like to welcome to the show Alejandro Montoya Marin. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm good, man. Thank you for having me. No, man. Thank you for reaching out, man. Uh, you know, um, I'm glad that you told me you were a fan of the show. So that oh, that's always a good way to, walk, to, to start the conversation. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was not going <laughs> to listen to you until I heard those words. And then I'm like, hey, what up? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, no, but seriously, man. And I, I wanted you on the show because of um, what you've gone through with your movie and uh, working with Robert Rodriguez and all this kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll get into all of that. But first, first, I always ask this of all my guests, how did you get into this ridiculous, crazy business? Uh, into film? Yes, well, in general. I've always been a fan of movies. Like, I've always collected uh, VHS tapes. I used to do mixtapes, kind of like how you do, like, cassette with music, but I would do them with VHS. I don't know what, so- I don't know what a VHS is or a cassette, sir. I'm sorry. You don't? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, messing, so I'm messing with you. Out. I'm messing with you, dude, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do like an episode of something, then a commercial, then a music video, then a movie. That's, so, oh, so you were like making mixtapes but with movies. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a fan, man. And then like um, I – even though I was born in the States, I was raised in Mexico. And back then it wasn't very – prominence to to people to study film or oh, God, no. you know, like to make a living out of the arts mm-hmm. that's crazy talk <laughs> yeah 
it's crazy talk, but now look at this. I know, and and for Latinos, it's even more crazy talk because it's so not even remotely in the culture. Uh, I agree. It's, exactly. You're 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 pushed aside as the crazy one of the family. Oh no, because you, you're not an accountant, doctor. Or no, you're you're the local. You know, like I told my dad, and my dad was like, "How do you make money with that?" Um, and my only answer at the time was like, "Well, I I can PA. <laughs> I can oh, I can." Man. You knew what PA was. I didn't know that. I I can make 50 bucks a day. And that was the big selling point. (laughs) Dad, I don't need much. Just 50 bucks a day. Yeah, that should hold me for my life. I'm good. (laughs) That should work out. It's like a knocked up. Remember when he gets run over? He's like, oh, I got $20,000 10 years ago. And I I still have $900. So that will hold me up for two years. (laughs) Exactly. Um, so then how, uh, how did you, ex- how did the experience of making a lot of short films, because you've, I've seen in your IMDb, you've made a ton of short films, your music videos, commercials. How did all of that prepare you to make your first feature film? That's a great question. I think every time you do something different, which, whether it be a commercial or a short film or a music video, you're kind of prepping and you're kind of like absorbing all this How do I approach this talent or how do I approach this shot? How long will it set me, help me to set up this kind of wide shot or this push in? It just kind of preps you so when you have multiple experiences, you can reach the new one and you're like, okay, I got to do this, this, and this. Uh, It'll be 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it gives you, it gives you that um, familiar essence and situation that makes you kind of ease through things a little bit easier Mm -hmm. excuse my redundance but it just it helps you uh, understand what it will take to accomplish something that's more elaborate or similar to what you already did so as opposed to the first short film you ever did where you had a shot list that that was about 150 shots in for an eight hour day and and three people on your crew you become more realistic of what can be accomplished within the time frame Exactly. You, you, I, I always like to do storyboards and shot sure. lists just because I want to like – I've never done anything past 10 grand so far. <laughs> so I, work, I, I feel you, brother. I feel you. <laughs> so I kind of don't want to waste anybody's time. So I always go to the bare necessities of what will – what do we need to sell this scene? Especially – and it helped me for this experience of Rebel Without a Crew because I didn't storyboard my movie. Right. Wow. There's no time. There well, let's no t- well let's uh, let's talk about it before we get into Rebel Without a Crew. When was the first time you heard about the mythical story of Robert Rodriguez, and how did it affect you as a Latino filmmaker? Well, I think I was about eleven years old. You're making me feel, you're making me feel old, but go ahead. How old are you? I'm older than you, sir. <laughs> I'm Thirty-six. I'm still older than you. <laughs> okay. I swear to God, if you say you're 37 or 38. No, no, I'm not, and I'm not in my 30s. Let's just put it that way. Okay, okay. Hey, hey, 40s is in your 30s, baby. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> so I was um, – obviously, I'm from Laredo, Texas. Mm-hmm. I'm from Laredo, Texas, which is two hours away from, uh, from San Antonio. Mm-hmm. And he's from San Antonio. He's first generation. I'm first generation. Mm-hmm. So me loving film – and seeing what he did with so little and what he was climbing, it's it was inspiring, man. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I told him in person, and I think it's on the show, um, I would wash my dad's car to get an allowance, which was $5, and pay to watch his movies, which were four ninety five. Wow. That's insane. That's actually that, – that's a pretty big compliment. It's – he inspired me. Like him um, – Robert uh, – Kevin Smith. Um, sure. That whole, uh, that whole 90s grew. Yeah. Ooh. Tarantino, P.T. Anderson. I mean sure. – Linkletter, uh, all those guys. Yeah. Linkletter. Like all those guys inspired me to do, to do film or, or to be like, look, I think if you are smart mm-hmm. and you give a creative script, it could happen maybe. Right. That's exactly. I, I mean I think you know, for me man with Robert when I first I was in uh I was in high school when uh when um Robert without Mariachi came out and I read that book Rebel Without a Crew cover to cover in college, oh, yeah. in college in college I still have a first printing of it uh and it I just it just blew my mind because it was this kind of mythical story I always say it's a, this mythical story of 
a kid who's tw- he's 23, man, 23, yeah. and he was making studio movies, you know, in a time when there was no like Latinos making movies. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Like, no, not really. Not in the studio yeah. system. I mean, they no. had to beg. They had to beg to get Antonio Banderas as the star of Desperado. And he murdered it. Oh, God, I love that movie. It's actually still one of my favorite Robert movies of all time. I love, 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 love Desperado. Um, I love but my favorite is Sin City and yeah. Planet Terror. Sorry. No, of course. Got you. Got you. I fucking I'm, love those movies. But, you know, so that – and for Robert, you know, a, a lot of times you do – as a filmmaker, you do need some inspiration. And there's no, there's no shortage of, of stories to inspire you. But Robert's story was just so magical where a $7,000 movie, which was the first time anyone had ever done that, got picked up by a studio and then he went off and 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 built up his career. And now he's working with James Cameron on his latest movie. Um, yep. You know, and they're buddies. Uh, I don't know if you knew this or not. I'm going to give you a quick Robert, uh, a Robert um, trivia a bit. Right. Do you know that the reason why James Cameron actually edited Titanic or co-edited Titanic it was because Robert did it? <laughs> no fucking way. I didn't know that. Yeah, because he was, he was watching Robert edit a movie. He's like, well, damn it. I should do that on my next movie. And Robert's like, you absolutely should. And he won the Oscar for editing on Titanic. <laughs> They've been friends. They've been really friends for. They've been friends forever, from what I understand. Um, all right, so oh, so. Yeah. Oh, just the one. I just wanted to yeah. like. I, I'm really excited for Alita: Battle Angel. I am like, too, man. I'm really, I'm really curious to see the combination of James Cameron and Robert Rodriguez. What comes out? I think that's going to be a very interesting, uh, interesting uh, porridge. <laughs> they're gonna put out there at South by Southwest when they they had the Alita party. Uh huh. It's in their backyard or in the lot of troublemakers, and it's like this half a mile radius of a fake city that they made that looks oh, like I a heard. bad. It is. I heard blowing, dude. No, I heard that they basically built out a back lot on trouble. Oh, amazing. Uh, it's and they and it's there. It's not going anywhere. So no, and they had the party there. They had function and electricity and like sewers and like one wheel motorcycles that are like from the future. No, 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 dude. Like it made me want to see the movie so much better, so much more because they put a lot of effort in making this world like authentic. I sure. mean, obviously there's going to be CGI for some stuff, but I'm telling you, dude, <laughs> I was on the set. It was, it was pretty magical. So can you talk a little bit about what troublemaker studios is and what Robert built out there? Cause I've never been, on, I would love to go one day. I've talked to a lot of people who have and who've worked with Robert, but it's basically a filmmaker's playground. If, if I'm not mistaken, it's basically his playground where he develops a bunch of stuff and projects and edits and works on stuff. So, it's very, very guarded. They have security. They're super nice. It's just, it's like, it's like the, the an independent filmmaker's dream. Like everyone that works there, top to bottom, are just super supportive. They love film. They're all movie geeks. It's like the ideal job. Wow, that must be insane. <laughs> it's amazing. So, I didn't want to go. so then, tell me about your process, your experience um, submitting to Rebel Without a Crew, and what was the Rebel Without a Crew series? So. Rebel Without a Crew is a TV show that people can go watch on Go90 right now. All the whole season's on right now. Uh, you can binge it. And in the fall, it'll be on El Rey Network, which is Robert's channel. Mm-hmm. Um, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't he have his own network? Yeah, right? Because, <laughs> because, because it, when he gets bored, he's just like, what else can I do? Oh, okay. I'll try uh, a network. Sport fighting. Or <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, yeah, okay. just an outlet for him to just mess around. Well, he cooks, he writes, he 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 edits, he plays music. Like, dude, like calm down. What a of individual. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the show so the show is based around the book that he wrote years ago. Yeah, it's basically it's it's like a TV adaptation of what the book is. Only this time Robert chose five filmmakers mm-hmm. across the country and he gives you uh, seven thousand dollars, three days to prep, fourteen nine hour days, and you shoot your first feature film. That's a like, oh. now. How did you submit? What was the submitting process like? The submitting process I did like I think I saw. I've been a fan of the channel for a while. Like his yeah. show, the director's chairs. Oh, love shows. that show. Love. I that love show. it. Love that show. Um, 
I loved uh, uh, From Dust Till Dawn, even though I haven't seen the third season. Right. Uh, and just because, I, you know, like they have like marathons of like Highlander, Terminator 2. Or, like I, I watch the channel. Like, yeah. I'm a fan. <laughs> yeah. And they post, excuse me, they posted uh, something about, hey, we're – Rebel, we need filmmakers and Rebel Without a Crew and blah, blah, blah. So I did. And I, it was various stages where, excuse me, I just ate. No worries. Gross. Um, where you would submit projects, short films. And then from there, it's it was several stages. You submit short films. Then if you they like that, then you submit a pitch. And then you submit the pitch, then a script. And then as you submit a script, you have like four Skype interviews and a psychological exam. And then... How would you maximize – it was a big process. Really? That, Psychological exam? That's oh, awesome. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, like what uh, – give me some storyboards. Show me a short film. Show me – They took beat you up. Two months. They beat you up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, once you – so you get the news. You got accepted. You lose your mind. Now, what is the next step? How what what was it like, and how did it go once you got accepted? Well, I got accepted, and it was okay. You're gonna come in Austin and do your movie, and and even though I'm independent, like I always have my my DP, a sound guy, sure, and they do give you a plus one. So I immediately was like, okay, I'm bringing the DP, so it looks good. Mm-hmm. Like my movie will look passable if I did it by myself. Right. I'm not a director of photography. Sure. You know, I know basic three point lighting, you know, like basic <laughs> shit. Right. And um, you know, getting there and the way they were treating us like like, you know, like they you would turn around from like, the block and then there's like ten cameras. Mm-hmm. And I can guarantee you, I'm telling you this honestly, none of it none of it was was planned. None of it was like, oh, let's do this so it creates drama. Right. Like none of that shit. I mean Doing a movie for 7K has drama in itself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in a city, you don't know. Right. Even more so. You're right because you didn't know the layout of the whole place. Yeah. We would have done it here in Albuquerque. No problem. I know I know people with uh, grip trucks. I know my, my, my plus one manages a grip company. Uh, so, so, but so, but did they basically just go, here's seven grand. They gave you no other resources? No, man. They For the show, when you see episode one, uh-huh. at the end of the show, they're like, by the way, it's time to pick up locations. And you're like, all right. They put a binder in front of us and they go, you got 15 minutes to pick your locations. Wow. That was – and they, but you, but those locations were, were set up that they, you could use them. Not for free. Not for free. <laughs> no, buddy. <laughs> Dude, how, the camera equipment and the sound, like yeah. you couldn't break your phone. They didn't give it to you for free. Half my budget went on camera and sound and grip. Really? And what kind of camera did you use? We used uh, – it was a, it was a, the C300. Okay. Uh, all around. Okay. Yeah. It was pretty Res- decent camera. Respectable camera. Absolutely. Yeah. You could definitely get some like good depth of field and it crushes the black background really nice. So they really kind of put you through the, through the ringer. Like you had to really make a movie for seven grand. Yeah. No. Yeah. Dude, it was. It and then was. How about post? Did you do all the posts yourself? They, you are able to bring people to help you. Like I brought a, uh, I brought a colorist, and uh, I edit in my day job. Mm-hmm. So um, it wasn't as difficult as I know that for other people. But sure. I did have someone that's a, a really close friend of mine to give me tips and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, like we did music. Like the soundtrack came out of those. Um, those seven grand, and I think I saved about seventeen hundred dollars by the end of the shoot because I knew my soundtrack was gonna was gonna be pivotal. But we were able to get music by like Sleigh Bells, Harlem, yeah, primitive rate odds. Yeah, like my goal was we gotta make the soundtrack one yeah. of the best independent film soundtracks. Right, and it sounds amazing. I saw I saw the the list of of, of uh, music guys. You guys, it's amazing. Yeah, thanks, man. No, the bands were amazing. Just to Mother West helped us out. He's a friend in um, uh, a record label in New York City that uh, that you know we've been working together. Mm-hmm. We're actually going to New York this Friday uh, to screen the movie at Soho Film Festival, and we're going to go to a Magnetic Fields concert the next day. Nice, nice. <laughs> so then, did now, from my understanding, Robert Rodriguez did mentor you a little bit. Yeah, Robert was very hands-on, man. Like he would come up and give us tips about like, look, 
locations. So if you do this, why don't you do that? Then you have so we we had two one on ones mm -hmm. that were anywhere from like fifteen to twenty minutes. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. <laughs> I mean, the man's doing a thousand at least a short film and three commercials right now. Sure. Sure. Why not? <laughs> but uh, yeah, right. Because why not? And, and but, he, but he did help you and he did mentor you a bit. Yeah. He would give us tips. And a lot of the tips that I grabbed from him mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. was about editing. So it was really cool that uh, he went to every set and visited every set. And um, when he went to my set, he stopped for a bit. He looked at me. I did one take. And then he goes, you're editing in your head, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. He's like, perfect. I do that too. It'll help you. Like he starts giving you tips of like, you should do this, but uh, maybe not worry about this unless you have time. Mm -hmm. um, just how to maximize time because we only had nine hour days. So yeah, you, you couldn't had, go over. You couldn't go over. There was just no way because you have a crew following you. And the house that we were at mm -hmm. is usually an hour away from all downtown Austin. Right. So that would uh, – that would like – that would fuck up our times. So then basically and, – and I've said this many times before is, is time is your, your biggest enemy when oh, making yeah. a movie. Is that – that clock keeps ticking no matter what. That sun is going down. Yep. No matter what, and no matter what kind of gear and crew and all that stuff, time is something you cannot control and it cannot stop. Well, yeah, and especially under this like budget, because if you had manpower, yeah, I mean, it won't look the same, but you can you can kind of mimic that something with a 10k, mm -hmm. you know. But then you don't have that, like. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's why I based my short film or the movie. I based it a lot at night because that way. We could uh, utilize the depth of the city of Austin, which has a lot of light, mm -hmm. and then with like maybe a pan on the fill, you can you know you can cheat a lot. Now, as far as the show is concerned, the five filmmakers is there a competition within the five film filmmakers, or it was just getting on the show was that's that's the goal, and that and you making your movie is the goal. Yes, sir. The second option. It's not a competition. It's basically just the journey of how we handle the stress and how we did our first feature film and you know, the result of it, you can see them. You'll see the movie very soon on go 90 no Ray Cause right now they're letting us tour film festivals. Now. The, so, um, the, I'm assuming there was some drama <laughs> on the show. Drama, drama. You don't want to know. <laughs> I'm assuming there was some drama on the show. Yeah, I'm sure there was. Uh, but was there any on your, on your episode? I mean, they kind of like do like a montage of of what everyone's going through. And yeah, like, dude, we had a bunch of stuff happen in mine. So it's like, what's the worst so thing that it, happened to you during the shoot of your first feature? There were several, my man. Um, our One of our actors uh, had to couldn't take the job. Mm -hmm. And it was like the day we had to choose actors. So if you want to see what happened, check it out. Uh, okay. It rained on us after unloading all the equipment, <laughs> setting up. It started raining. <laughs> And I was just like, then we got pulled in, like cops came in and tried to shut down the set. Really? Oh, bro, you have, dude, you're going to have a blast. Because, oh, like, my God. I can't <laughs> wait to watch the show. I'm dying to watch the show. That's a lot, of stuff. a lot of craziness. Now, what is the biggest lesson you learned from this entire experience? Uh, patience. <laughs> have, have, learn to practice patience. That it's okay to over to prepare, mm -hmm. over prepare, but there always has to be an element of spontaneity mm -hmm. on set. There mm -hmm. always has to be. And every time I do a project, I <coughs> become more allured and more in love with actors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. But actors that really want to work, not divas that are trying to, you know, oh, I can't get this to get attention. Right, right, right. You know, People like, who are in the craft. Exactly. Professionals. Not like I can't talk to you in my uh, – I have to like – I saw the documentary where Jim Carrey played oh, Andy Kaufman. What Man, a great doc. It's a great documentary, but I don't think I would have had the patience. Oh, to deal with him? Like, yeah, man. I would have been like, Jim, I'm going to fucking beat the shit out of you. Well, the Stop acting like a child. But the thing is that he was doing that to Milos Foreman and Milos like – 
is an Oscar winning director. I know. And he couldn't handle him. But when when you when you hire someone of that caliber doing that kind of work, you just strap on and hold on tight and you just roll yeah, with it. Because if, if you've I, got to. Because at that point, Jim was Jim. Like he was the one of the biggest stars in the world at that moment. Oh yeah. And you just Maybe now I say no because I've never gotten to have that opportunity. But like let's say, oh, I made I wrote a script that Daniel Day Lewis yeah, came d- out of retirement. I'll be like, dude, do whatever oh, you want. Yeah, he could, <laughs> He could like fling crap at me like a monkey. I will. I'll be fine with it. Just make, like, it. Exactly. If that's what gets you gets you to the point that you need to get to, Daniel. Fine. I get you. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I ever heard was from uh, how to work with actors like of that caliber. Uh-huh. Is because I always ask you know directors when they come on the show like how do you work with these big stars? You know if you if you have the opportunity to work with a legend or a big star. And uh, this director, Zach, I forgot his uh, – I can't say – I can't pronounce his last name. But he directed a movie with John Malkovich. Mm-hmm. And it's John, it's John fucking Malkovich. You know, like how do you direct John Malkovich? And it's your first movie. Yeah. So how do – and he the, he did a – it was wonderful. He walked up to, J, to John on the first day and goes, how do you want to be directed? And I was like, that's amazing. And he was like, thank you for asking. And and he gave him the, because it's John Malkovich. You're not going to treat John Malkovich like you're going to treat a first year actor. Well, you can't treat actors the same. Like I've noticed that yep. some actors respond to over comforting, and you're doing a fantastic job, yep. and they respond that way. And I know actors that I'd be like, "Hey, stop fucking around. Let's do this." And they boom, they just fucking get on it. They go, they go. So some more, so yeah, actors are some more, are more needy. Some are, are more off, and they like just let me be. Yeah, everyone's different. Everyone's different, but if you but with a with a star of that caliber on set, if you don't get that code well within the first half day, yeah, the rest of the shoots you could, it's gone. If they want to yep. start pushing you around, I had this one director I knew that had a, a did a movie with um with like uh, some big let's just call them big action stars. Got it. That you, if I tell you your name, you know who they are. 80s, 80s and 90s action stars, okay? Yeah, I, I'm, probably, I'm pretty sure I know who you're talking about. All right. About. Within the first 15 minutes, they tested him, and that was over. And they beat him up and pushed him around the entire show, the entire show, because he did not know how to handle those kind of personalities. So it, it, it's it, – directing is not only about um, cameras and lenses <laughs> – and, and it's about and, micromanaging a whole set, dude. Oh, dude, it's insane, man. It's insane. Now, talk talk a little bit about the movie. We've been talking about the making of it. What's the movie? The name is Monday. The movie's called yes. Monday. Tell us how you came up with it, what's it about, all that good stuff. So Monday's an action comedy, uh, very inspired by um after hours mm-hmm. and Scorsese, it's, of course. It, yeah, right? I love him. I love that. And, movie. And, and ride all those like really fast paced BT Anderson kind of movement. Yeah. And it's about it's about a, a stoner who gets uh fired and dumped. So when he tries to get his life back together, he gets caught in the middle of a cartel war. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Why would it happens every day? It happens every day. <laughs> so it's him kind of like escaping uh the inevitables because when he gets caught in the cartel war, he gets uh you know, he's like basically like you have to kill this person or we kill you and your family. Nice. Nice. So you're really pushing the uh, the obstacles on this poor character. Oh, yeah. No, we, we, we tried and, and we tried to make it like a, like a roller coaster ride. And my movie's only 60 minutes. But I uh, I think what we set out to do, we did. Mm-hmm. I went into this to the Rebel Without a Crew show. Not trying to oh make the next reservoir, make the next hard aid, make the next sure. no, just make a movie that has no plot holes. You're already under a lot of stress and cameras pointed at you twenty four seven. Oh god, I can imagine that must be insane. It was it was pretty insane. Yeah, because it's it's, it's difficult enough to direct a feature, uh, but then to have the pressure of a documentary crew following you every second of every day, you can't lose your shit. You can't say something stupid because now it's on tape. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. That yeah. must have been an experience. So that's what the, the whole goal was. It's just like, look, just make make sure you have no plot holes and have a good time. Make a fun movie. Survive. Basically survive. <laughs> yeah. No, 
also be, I also every time I do a movie, I always think of the S spectator. Like, um, I don't know if I said that right. Sorry, English is my second language. <laughs> the the audience and, member. Uh, espectador, espectador, yes, audience. Yes, audience. Yes, of course. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. I I do movies that I would love to sit down and like I would watch. Sure. Like if someone told me that pitch, you know what I mean? Yeah, sounds like interesting. Yeah, of course. Movie, I'm like, I'd watch the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Now you also just you got to another milestone, if not making your first feature, if not having Robert Rodriguez mentor you, if not shooting all around Austin and, and having a good old time and being on a show. You just screened your movie at South by Southwest this year. What yes. the hell was that like? That It was amazing. I mean, <laughs> I remember for people that are not in the film industry, like I was telling my cousins, right? like, hey, we screened, I don't know. Mar- it was March 12th, actually. I remember the exact date. Mm-hmm. And they still hadn't had t- – they're from Mexico City and they hadn't had tickets fi- a week before. And I'm like – Hey, I just want to let you know, this isn't a rinky dink film festival. It's one of the top in the world. If you, if you think you're going to just like waltz in, get tickets. It's like, bro, it doesn't happen that way. (laughs) They're like, Oh, this is not South by South. Okay. One little film festival. Okay. No, yeah, yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> exactly. He didn't even give us tickets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Sorry, man, I can't. <laughs> oh God, I can only imagine the craziness. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, as filmmakers, you want you want Sundance, you want South by, you want Tribeca, Toronto, Cannes, you know, the top five, like you know, and there's yeah. and there's and a handful of other ones there as well, but there's only really five to ten big festivals in the world that mean anything anymore in a lot of ways. And South by Southwest has climbed up that ladder to be uh, arguably one of the top two or three uh, festivals in the country. Oh yeah, dude. No, it was an experience. Like the whole city of Austin, like shut down. down. (laughs) I've never been, I've never been, but they shut down. I hear. Hey dude, you're going to have a blast. There's, there's always parties. There's always people. There's, craziness no 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 it was so much fun you got to you get to meet uh like my star jamie got to meet ethan hawk like it's just i got no it's it's so much fun man it, it was it was overwhelming and you know how you when you have one of the best moments in your life or days in your life it goes by really quick yep that's how it was man and it but was thanks over to the show yeah it's over but thanks to the show i could always relive it because it was just ear to ear smile and just, you know, enjoying just going for the ride. That was a lot of fun. That's so awesome, man. So what's the next, what's next for you, man? Well, we're already in talks of doing another feature. We got financed to do another one and we're figuring out if it's doing one full movie or partially financed to do another one. Is so, it, are we talking another seven grand or are we a little bit higher now? <laughs> no, fuck that. <laughs> I need to eat, senor. I need to, I need to buy What is food. this eating? You're an artist. It's about the art. No? Can't you just – I'm a fat artist. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, um, we, we, we're we actually thinking of might doing a sequel uh, for, for Monday. And yeah, it will be called Tuesday. No, of course. And then you've got five more, five more sequels. Make a whole series out of it. <laughs> yeah, right. If they like it. If people watch the first one or the second one. Now, but, as, as far as distribution is concerned, how does that work? And who owns it? Do you own it? Does the, the Troublemaker own it? Yeah, it's going to be screening on Go90 and El Rey. So they have, they have the rights. And I'm perfectly fine with that because okay. – Got it. I'm a, like I said, I'm a fan of El, Net- El Rey Network. So like, that, that like, it's on El Rey, you'll be like happy as all hell. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Awesome. Heck yeah. I mean, well, obviously, if we can sell distribution for like international. That could be awesome just to have other languages check the movie out. Sure, of course, of course. Now, listen, so I'm going to uh, give you a lightning round of a bunch of questions I ask all of my guests. Um, huh. What advice would you give a filmmaker wanting to break into the business today? It's going to be hard. You're going to get no every day, mm-hmm. multiple times a day. Mm-hmm. But if you really love it and you and this is the only thing you want to do, do it because it's a beautiful feeling when you accomplish or you take a step up. Mm-hmm. So do what you love, but 
make sure you're going to suffer. It's going to take a lot of work and you're going to have to learn and work a lot. The the funny thing is, is like those eight years of pain are all worth for that one minute of, Hey, I just screened at South by Southwest. (laughs) I agree. Isn't it, isn't it, isn't it that like that moment you're like, I've been busting my ass for a decade, but I just got here and it's all worth it. (laughs) It's weird. When Robert, I'm not going to lie, dude, when Uh Robert, uh, shared we got our first review from um uh <laughs> damn uh game of geek no yeah geek of Thro- or uh, some, den I- of geek den of geek or something like that yeah 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 uh damn it i'm so i feel so embarrassed that i can't remember give no, me a okay. second i gotta say i gotta plug them please uh, no worries no worries but what did they while you're looking what did they say they gave me such an amazing um review Mm -hmm. on the movie like they saw it and they loved it that robert shared on all his social media our movie poster nice yeah man and i was just like jesus christ you know (laughs) you know what i mean like of course of course of course i was like i i I cried a little i didn't you should cry a lot sir that's a hell of an accomplishment man no questions now can you tell me the book that had the biggest impact on your life or career i mean obviously rebel Rebel without rebel without a crew of course rebel without a crew was one of them but i loved the godfather like i loved the godfather i uh that was it i loved the movie already when Uh i was a kid like i saw that movie way too young yeah, as you, yeah, I know. <laughs> as you should. As you should. My, my six-year-old's already seen it. It's amazing. No. <laughs> it's a fantastic movie. And then reading the book was just pretty mind-blowing. Like, I was like, oh, my God. This yeah. is amazing. Right. He's like, it's an amazing movie. There's a lot of stuff that, that's not in the movie, so it just makes everything seem better. Or sure. not better, but, like, you discover little layers of the it's, character. It's more flavor. It's just different layers of flavor. To, I agree. to something that you thought was delicious in the first place. Um, now, what is the lesson that took you the longest to learn, whether in the film business or in life? And by the way, it's Game of Nerds. There it is. Good. Game of Nerds. I think. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll put, we'll, it's we'll, a um, it is Game of Nerds. Jeez, okay. um, that's, a, that's a tough one, man. I think – one big one that uh, I've been discussing a lot is you can't really compare yourself to everyone because yeah. everyone has a different trajectory that you're going that they're taking to get to the top or to get to one of the top spots or you know or wherever know. they're going wherever they're going exactly. So when you see someone that didn't struggle maybe as much as you or like Robert that, like like Robert like twenty three he gets a freaking studio deal. <laughs> Yeah, man, but he sold his blood. He was married. He had kids. He fair was, enough. Fair like, enough. But a lot yeah, of people, a lot of people would still bust his balls. Like you were twenty three, you got it handed to you. But they don't know that story of all the other stuff they had to go through to get to that point. But still, I can see. I see your point. Yeah. No, it's you just can't compare yourself. It'll if it, if it happens, it happens. I think that I never want to. First of all, I can. I don't think I'll ever be as talented as Spielberg or Rodriguez or Tarantino. Mm-hmm. But if I those guys are just like they're just so good at what they do and I think the fact that if I can make a living and live comfortably doing art and making films, mm-hmm. I it feels like I, I accomplished what I set out to do in life. No, absolutely. I mean if you can make a living doing your art, my God, you've won. Right? You've won, dude. And like and you don't have to be the major league, you know, star that hits a hundred home runs in a season. Like, exactly. You could be the guy with a 250 average and that's just working and 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 getting people on base and, and doing your job and making a living doing what you love. You don't, you know, there are those look, there's there's only one LeBron, you know. Yeah, there's exactly. o- there's only one Michael Jordan and and you know there's a whole a whole league of guys who wanted to be Michael Jordan. <laughs> exactly. It's you know, it's it, it, I don't know, man. I feel like that's the um that's the ultimate goal. You're doing what you love. It's like the red letter media guys on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They yeah. look like they're having a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Rocket Jump, those guys. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, was it the, the ter- teeth, chicken teeth or rooster teeth? Rooster teeth. Yeah, rooster teeth, chicken teeth. Uh, rooster, <laughs> rooster teeth. The, those guys are – they're having a ball. You know, are they making Avengers? No. 
but they're having a ball and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. They're dude. Great time. They're paying their bills. They're hanging out with people that love art and they're having fun. Like, dude, you're, you're good. That's a you're good at that point. Now, what are three of your favorite films of all time? Star Wars, the Godfather, Pulp Fiction. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. Good, good trio. Good, good, good. <laughs> now, and where can people find you online? Um, they can go to Instagram and look up Alejandro Montoya Marino, one word, mm-hmm. or uh, on Facebook, Alejandro Montoya Marin, and also on YouTube. I have a, a YouTube page that I don't really do a lot on, but it has <laughs> music video, short films, and I, I usually document on my iPhone when we go to another film th- minute videos of just what we're doing on a montage of music and nice yeah they're fun to do nice and of course you have your website i do www.alejandromontoyamarin.com very cool man alejandro man thank you for sharing your journey with us man and uh congratulations man i mean you've definitely you're one of five people who had a very unique experience uh so uh, that's why i wanted to have you on the show and thank you again for the inspiration sir no, thank you so much for having me, man. And hopefully uh, people can go check out the show because it definitely has a feel of inspiration and a feel that you shouldn't you shouldn't give up if you really want it because, I mean, come on, man. I, I, never, I never thought in my mind, yeah, I'm going to shake Robert Rodriguez's hand and we're going to talk about Predator in his office. <laughs> right. That's, you know, that's it, generally not in the, in the cards for most people. Exactly. I never thought it would. Like people would say that. I'm like, hey, you're crazy, man. So no, <laughs> man. It's thank you so much for having me. This was fun. I was looking forward to this. Thanks, man. I gotta admit, I'm a little jealous. I gotta admit. <laughs> no, but seriously, Alejandro, I want to thank Alejandro for coming on and sharing his journey. Um, but I mean, who wouldn't want this opportunity? Who wouldn't have wanted to be mentored by Robert Rodriguez and go through this process? And uh, I'm so glad it's worked out for him. And Monday is an awesome action movie. And if you guys get a chance to watch it, definitely see it on uh, the El Rey Network, which I'll put links in the show notes at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 252. And if you guys have not read Robert Rodriguez's legendary book called Rebel Without a Crew about his experience making El Mariachi and his Hollywood experience, which I think is even more interesting of what he went through and how he kind of rose the ranks with that movie. Uh, It is an eye-opening book, so I will have a link for it in the show notes as well. Please check it out, and also check out the show. It is going to be airing on the L. Ray Network. I'd also like to thank our new sponsor, Streamlit.com. Now, if you're selling your film on Amazon Prime and noticing that you're not getting a whole lot of cash for it nowadays, think about also putting it on Streamlit. It is a SVOD platform, a subscription-based platform where your movie will not be buried. It's free to submit and has a royalty rate three times as much as Amazon. So you get to keep all the rights. So if you want to submit your film today, go to streamlet.com. That's S-T-R-E-A-M-L-E-T-T-E.com. And I'll leave links to it in the show notes. And that's it. Another one in the can, number 252. Thanks for all the support, guys. And again, if you have not gone to filmmakingpodcast.com and leave me a good review, a good five-star review, stop what you're doing right now and go do that. If you like the show, it helps me out. It helps the show out so, so much. So thanks for your support, guys. And as always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 